the only test that was available at the time that we started this was the NP swab. And while that has really been kind of the go-to assay since the, the beginning of the pandemic, um, I think anyone who's had it knows that, that first that test is, can be a bit uncomfortable. Is that we knew that if we could make this work with saliva, that that would basically overcome some of the, the discomfort associated with the NP swab. Plus, we wouldn't have to expose healthcare workers to collect the samples. Uh, with the saliva test, basically the individual can take the tube, can stand off at a safe distance, even if they're being supervised, uh, and not expose anyone else while they're collecting their sample. Uh, while we were developing the saliva test, it became very, very clear that the demand was going to uh, become greater than what the supply chain could handle for the existing NP swab. Uh, assays. As it became clear how difficult it was going to be to continue to scale up to the, the region and, and the country's needs for testing, that the assay that we were developing would, would definitely be able to have a number of benefits in that area. So we've done a number of studies with this test comparing it to NP swabs, which are basically considered to be the gold standard for clinical test in the space and have been used since the beginning of the pandemic. And in every case, it's basically shown to be uh, virtually equivalent to the NP swabs in terms of the sensitivity. In regards to the specificity or the, um, you know, the lack of calling someone a positive when they really don't have the virus, this test is actually exquisitely uh, specific. Um, due not only to the nature of the platform, but the way that we run the test within our laboratory we estimate that our false positive rate, the likelihood of calling someone a positive when they're really not, is somewhere between one in 50,000 and one in 100,000. So virtually no one will get called a false positive. So on a day-to-day, -day, I see the operations of the surveillance testing site, and I enforce compliance for students to ensure that they are coming in, getting tested bi-weekly, and if they aren't, making sure that they know that they need to and communicating with all the teams on campus to keep us all safe. We have a staff of 12 full-time employees, and we have three student workers on our team. Okay, so every week we test about 3,000 students for their, their bi-weekly surveillance testing, and we now have the capacity to test an additional 1,000 students as optional testing when it's not their assigned week. Our current turnaround times are averaging about 18 to 20 hours, and that really was our target, to ensure that we were getting 99% of the tests back out in less than 24 hours. We had a contact with uh, our partners at Fluidine, and we decided to see if we could put together our pre-processing steps for the samples with a format of the assay that they had developed. And after just a little bit of testing, it was very, very clear that when we put the two together, uh, we had actually caught a bit of lightning in the bottle, so to speak. Um, the two working together worked tremendously well. The sensitivity and specificity were uh, actually exceeded our expectations. Um, and working together, we submitted, we actually both submitted an EUA. Uh, what they've submitted a manufacturer EUA, we submitted a, a clinical laboratory EUA. Theirs was approved first uh, under the manufacturer guidelines, but because we, it was, you know, we work with them on the assay, we run the assay exactly as it's described, we were free to go ahead and operate under that EUA. And we've been doing that ever since uh, basically the end of July.